Yo, what's up guys? Another tier list and this is a tier list of all elemental normal net 5 units out there. And this video can definitely be used for the event that we currently have. That event is that you summon 10 units and then you have to choose one. This can definitely help you out. Also, if you're more in the early game or you're not too familiar with any of the units, you can save this video and come back to it at a later moment. I will put timestamps down below for each of the families. I will also place them by those families. And it can look up, for example, oh, you pulled an NFL. I'm going to look up the OG family in this video and then maybe say said something about the unit. Where can you use it? What bolts can you use it for? I will mention those things. Where can you use them? What kind of bolts are recommended? And maybe what kind of teams they're recommended in. But that's kind of depending on the unit if they have a specific team to be recommended in. And all of those things will be mentioned in this video while also placing all of those units in the tier list. I also made a few disclaimers up here on the top. Uh, all of the units will be placed bo uh, on a bunch of things. So it's not just RTA, it's not just Siege, it's a bit of everything. I am more of an endgame player, so I have a little bit more of an endgame bias in that. But I also played the early game accounts this year. So I definitely value the early game and dungeons for some of these net fives in as well. However, I can mention that you can play all of the early game and all of the dungeons with all like free to play units. So it's not necessarily needed that you have some net fives in there, but some of them are pretty good at it. So they were, so were mentioned over there as well. We have them for RTA and for Siege, of course. And then it also doesn't mean that any unit that is low placed means that it's absolutely bad. It just means that it's more niche in what it does. Maybe it's good in one scenario rather than the other. And it could mean that if you put very good runes to something, it could still be good. But this is a very overall global uh, tier list. So for that reason, some of the units that you have to put crazy runes to and that kind of stuff are going to be somewhat lower than this. Um, yeah, and once again, as always, this is my opinion. So feel free to disagree with it. I made this video on the start of January last year as well. So I'm going to make this a January thing. Also, I'm going to be making one for all of the LD5s, which is going to be released tomorrow. LD5s is always a more, little bit more tricky part because then people are going to be like, if you put my unit too high, it's going to get nerfed. And if you don't put my unit low enough, it's not going to get a buff. <laughs> so yeah, I don't have value on that. Like I, I, I cannot influence those things. I can just place things where I think they're good. And what count as buffs or nerfs, that's not up to me. So let's start with the family. And I last year I did it in two hours. I hope to do it a little bit shorter than two hours. But if I explain all of the builds and where I will use them, it's probably going to still be two hours. Well, first of all, we actually start off with a very strong one, which is Camilla. And Camilla straight goes to the 100. Oh, let me explain a little bit about the tiers that I use if you've never seen any of my videos. I always do the tiers rather than triple S and then double S and then one S. It's pretty much the same thing. A tier list is a relative thing of like A is better than B or on the same level as B. And the reason that I use these 100 things is that I can easily put like a tier in between and call it like 97 and a half or something like that. For RTA, I use that a lot. For this, I might not use that, but the first unit that I will place is Camilla of the Valkyrie family. Very commonly used as a Vionem or Vio Destroy. Most commonly used in Siege Offense, I would say. Pretty common used in um, RTA. Siege Defense, one of the meta units. You could put it to early game as a solo farmer as well. So this unit has a bit of everything. So Vio is most of the time the main build. Fire Nemesis, Fire Destroy, Speed, Crit Rate, HP, Speed, Crit Damage, HP. There's a whole bunch of options to it. But overall, it's just a very strong unit because it's the main meta in Siege Defense. It is the main meta in Siege Offense. And it's just a pretty good RTA unit as well. So that straight away goes for me to the 100 tier because it's just one of those insane, insane good units. Her sister, the, um, what's it called? Vanessa, very strong unit as well. Doesn't have too much value in early game or dungeons. Doesn't have any value in Siege Offense or Defense. Does have good value in Arena Defense. And is a very good unit in RTA. So for that reason that it's only good in two things. Gets a little bit lower. Most commonly built as a unit that's just a pure tank. Some people do put it to Vio. It still has that skill too that's um, setting up that armor break. So you want to go for high accuracy on it. You could put some crit rate to it because the skill too is also scaling of enemy max HP. So you just need some crit rate. And then you already do damage. It's the same thing for Camilla, which is crit rate and crit damage. You already do quite some damage because enemy max HP scaling. But since it's not as usable for like uh, siege offense and those kind of things, I put her a little bit lower, but definitely a very strong unit. But I would say it's more of a just siege defense unit and a very RTA focused unit. This is she shines very well on RTA. She gets a lot of credit for that. But 
Um, besides that, no, I'm going to lower one down. I'm going to put uh, Vanessa on the 85. Uh, Katarina, I am not going to place in any of the fusions. So Katarina, I actually forgot to uh, remove from here. But the fusions, everyone can get just get. It's just recommended to get them. But I'm not going to place in any of the fusions. So from here, we go straight into the dragons. We have a Varad, and Varad is very good for the early game. Varad, early game, very good. Dungeons, maybe not that good, but you have some stuff uh, like TOA and that kind of stuff. Oh, I didn't actually mention TOA in here. Let me TOA, add that in here as well. So TOA, very good. Siege offense, pretty good. Siege uh, or arena offense, pretty decent. RTA, pretty decent. So that's just an overall very good unit. And I would definitely say it shines very well in the early game. In the early game, a lot of usability comes from Farad. I would say in the late game, I don't use him as much anymore. Well, I use him in one siege offense. But definitely a very strong unit. I might even one up Varad. He's very versatile. We have Cyrus. Well, Cyrus is, I would say, just arena offense, siege offense. You could use him in uh, early game clearing stages. So it's definitely still a strong unit for that. I would say TOA also still a pretty strong unit. So. I give Cyrus actually a 90. Cyrus, we start off with a whole bunch of strong units, to be honest. Cyrus is actually pretty strong in a lot of uh, stuff. The only thing that Cyrus is not good at is RTA and in uh, dungeons. I missed the uh, the bolts of Red. For Red is going to be most of the time people like to put it on Swift. Swift crit rate defense. You want to have as high defense as possible because that's the way how you guarantee that your skill will land. And then you want to have high accuracy as well. For Cyrus, it's mostly Swift as well, Swift or Fatal or Rage, and just aim for a lot of damage. But you also want to aim for high accuracy, because that high accuracy makes it where you can land your skill 3. And that skill 3 reset is definitely very strong. It's just not a great unit for RTA, but definitely a strong unit for these other things. Jemire. Jemire is pretty much just Siege Offense, Arena Offense here and there, and RTA, but in RTA I don't like it as much. It's commonly used as a swift unit uh, as well. It's sometimes used as a nemesis trap in RTA. Uh, Cutman builds are still crit rate or crit damage on the slot 4 because it has uh, speed scaling in there and enemy max HP scaling in there. So definitely a decent unit, but early game and dungeons is not going to bring you anything. TOA, it's, no, it's actually a decent option for TOA for resetting your team. I actually do use it for TOA hell. So let's one-up it for that. And then Siege Offense, Arena Offense. Yeah, it actually has quite some usability. It has the flexibility of a bunch of things. It's just not that much of an early game unit. It's more of a later game unit that he becomes pretty usable. And I feel like I'm placing all of these units way too high. But we will see a few more units at the bottom at some point. But Jamari is also 90 for me. Just of the usability in like Siege Offense. There's quite a bunch of good Siege Offense with him. Where you use like, for example, the Light Amonculus and then a Nuker next to it. It's kind of a premium offense. It's a lot more late game, but it's definitely strong out there. And for TOA Heart or TOA Hell, it's one of the best units because it's resetting your whole team, but also doing a lot of damage to the uh, boss. So definitely for TOA Hell, one of the better pickup units there. Uh, then we go on with Chimera's first off is Teor. I would say Teor uh, for early game, definitely not too bad, but I would value something like a Verad way higher. They have like both the pushback, some damage. The S2 is more single target damage on Teor. Teor is pretty nice for Siege offense as well. Arena offense wouldn't really use it too much. It is a possibility, but it's not as great. RTA, it's used here and there, but not as much. TOA, it's also not too bad, but it's also not super great. Um, but early game, it has quite some value there as well. So Teor is going to get an 85 for me for pretty much all of those things combined. Um, then we have the Rakan. Rakan you see sometimes on Siege Defense. It's not really great for early game. It's not good for dungeons. It's not good for RTA. It's, yeah, just Siege Defense. Wouldn't really put it to Siege Offense. I've seen some people use it on Arena Defense, but it's also not doing too great there. It can surprise someone if you actually put it to Swift and then put a lot of damage to it. Same for the... Uh, Teor, Teor build is also on Swift, most likely. Could put it to Vio. And the thing with Teor, uh, I forgot the Teor build. I have to keep mind if <laughs> all of these builds and that kind of stuff. But for the Teor build, you want to go crit damage slot 4. And you don't want to care too much about having a lot of crit rate because his S2 will always crit as long as you outspeed the enemy. Uh, build for Rakan, I would actually put him, like, if you put him to defense, I would actually put him on Swift. People don't expect him to be Swift. And then he has the Provoke, which also strips. And then also if other units 
um, on the side of it could also be provoked if they don't have will rune. So it could be more of a trap unit in there, but Rakan is a 65 for me because it's not really that great of a unit in the things he does. Then we have Lagmaron, which is very similar in kit as uh, Deor. And I would say that he is slightly the wrong element for certain things to do. There's a lot more where I would say that Deor feels stronger. But he kind of has like similar kit. He has higher base speed that makes it a little bit easier to do the speed tuning and stuff. However, I feel like he's slightly worse to me. Well, actually, no, they're kind of same, same. Like, they're also good for, like, early game dungeons. Well, actually, you can put Teor to uh, the early game giants. You can put, uh, or you can put Lagmaron to early game giants. You can put Teor to early game dragons. I would say that in dragons, Teor does a very good job. In giants, there's pretty much, pretty fast already other options that might do better. But both of them are definitely solid units out there, I would say. Next up, we have Perna. Perna is most likely just a siege defense, maybe siege offense, um, and that is about it. it. It doesn't really add too much in that. So Perna, in all honesty, while you can put Perna to some PvE things, it does heal as well. It's not too bad in the Rift Raids. So yeah, actually in Rift Raids, it's one of the better units out there. So I'm going to put Perna on 75 because, well, just that. And I would say for siege defense, it's it's pretty decent for siege defense in like the lower ranks of uh, siege defense. Arena defense wouldn't really put him there. Uh, then we have Tesher and Tesher. I'm gonna put I would say 95. Uh, it is the most meta unit for arena or no for giants farming. It does exceptionally well in it. It's not that hard to rune, and for that it gets a lot of credits in that. It's not a siege unit. It's not an arena unit. It's not an RTA unit. It's just early game and dungeons. But dungeon late game, it's still the most meta thing out there. And it's like a hundred times easier to rune than any of the other Giants dungeons. And I would say Giants in current state is kind of the main dungeon that people want to focus for. So in this case, the Teshar bolt is going to be something along the lines of like Rage, um, Rage, Fatal, anything that does a lot of damage and you just aim for that. I forgot to build up about Perna and Perna is mostly on Vio. I think that's nice on Perna is that you want to go for artifacts that are based on defense because the defense of Perna is super low. So adding those base defense artifacts in gives him a lot of stats that way. And for Tesha, it's just damage. It's just giants, it's DOA, it's that kind of stuff. But he's not a hundred because he lacks in like everything else. But the things he does, he does that good that Tesha gets a 95 for me. Uh, then we move on to the Archangels. First off, Ariel. I would say Ariel is just an arena defense unit, but doesn't really do too well it, into it because you kind of have to sack to win. And it's just the healing, it's just the recovery, it's just the cleanses. Arena offense, you can maybe use it here and there, but anything else, it's not really a great unit at the moment. So I would give Ariel a 55 common builds. You could build it on like triple nemesis, or you can build on like Vio nemesis. And then just tanking as most of the things that you want to do. Then we have its brother, uh, Valajul. And Valajul is also not that great of a unit at the moment. Um, it just provides the immunity. It might be nice paired to other units that have like defense scaling things or defense increasing effects. So for example, an Alaya. But then again, a lot of the units these days already provide immunity. And normally, uh, Valajul's like interesting kit was... It gives immunity, but now you have a friend, you have a Riley, you have an Alaya, you have Wusa, you have so many good units that also do something pretty nice next to it, which Valachul doesn't really do. It might be decent for siege offense, but that's literally just it. Most common builds, so you could try to put some damage to it. He has defense scaling on the S2 and the S1, I think, but he doesn't really do too much. So Valachul gets a 55 for me. Then we have Eladriel. Eladro is a healer you sometimes see on Siege Defense. On Arena Defense, you don't see him anywhere. You could put him as a Wind Tank for um, Siege Offense. I would give him a little bit higher because it's both in Siege Offense and Siege Defense. It's kind of niche in Siege Defense. It's not even that great. So most common builds is also just pure tanky, Vio, something like that. Could be Nemesis. But Eladro gets a 60 for me. Going on to the Oracle family, Praha first. Praha is, I would say, just an RTA unit. I wouldn't really use it anywhere else. I have seen it way back in the days in Arena Defense or even on Siege Defense, but it's not as common as a unit, so it's just an RTA unit. In current RTA meta, she's not the greatest. She does okay, but she's not like super exceptional or anything. 
But she, she's pretty okay in uh, RTA, so she gets some value for that. So Praha gets a 75 for me. Most common build is that you want to have those crit rate on the slot 4 that makes them cycle on the S1. You could put R2 uh, via Nemesis or via Will and then just aim a lot of HP. And then for artifacts, you kind of want to aim into these additional damage artifacts that are additional damage by speed, HP, attack and those kind of things. Uh, next one is Juno, and Juno, I would say, doesn't have any value for anything PvE. TOA, also not really. Siege Offense is an incredible strong Siege Offense unit the moment that you're fighting Noras or Kikis or anything that provides a lot of debuffs. Juno is insanely good for Siege Offense. Arena Offense, not really. Arena Defense can be used. Siege Defense, also not really used. But also a very, very good uh, RTA unit. Might be one of the, the best elemental units in RTA out there. So I will place Juno on a 90. That is pretty much quite RTA biased and endgame biased. But Juno is very much a good unit for endgame. Early game, I don't think it would shine too much. You could put it to your arena defense early game. I definitely do think it will do good there. Wouldn't use it as a main stripper as arena offense. But I will give Juno a 90. And the most common builds are Despair. And then Despair in combination with Destroy in the case of Siege Offense. In the case of Siege Defense, it's just very tanky. And then, uh, did I say Destroy? Despair Destroy is for Siege Offense. And Despair Nemesis or Despair Revenge is most likely what you want to aim for for Arena Defense and for RTA. Um, I would say in RTA, you also want to put quite some crit rate to it because then she has a lot of the cycling. Becomes pretty annoying that way. Same thing as all of the other Oracles and any other multi-hitters. It's a lot of additional damage artifacts that make her do quite some damage. So Juno gets a 90 for me. I don't place it higher than that because it's really just a very end game kind of core unit. And yeah, she's lacking in the other subjects. Well, I'm actually going to give her one up. I give her 95 because I would say that arguably she's one of the strongest RTA units in the end game. And she still has quite some usability in the other... Uh, regions as well. It's just not one of those units in the very early games. It's not going to pick up too much for you. Then we have Sierra. Sierra is sometimes used on Siege Defense. I have seen Sierra, of course, used on Sierra, uh, Arena Offense. Arena Offense, you still have the Bomber teams. Early game, she's not going to bring too much for you. I would say uh, Siege Offense, especially early game, is definitely a strong unit. RTA, early game, probably strong as well. Some of them, the later game, she kind of tends to fall off, I would say. But definitely a strong unit out there. And I would still give Sierra, I would say a 90. Because she has some versatility and she has like the unique ability to allow bomb teams. And there's not another single unit that does it as good as her to allow bomb teams. And that just makes her that unique. And this unique value adds quite some value to her. Even though that she's somewhat worse in meta than she used to be. So Sierra gets a 90 for me. Most likely also built on Vio, I would say Vio Will or something. You want to add some high accuracy, high attack to it because then the bombs land and then also explode well. But you can also go for crit rate slot 4, have that cycling in, and then also additional damage artifacts. Next on are the OGs. Starting off with NFL. I would say NFL is definitely a very good early game unit. Um, Dungeons early game, you could put it to Dragons. It wouldn't be too bad for your first Dragons team, but it's also not crazy good for it. Early game, it's definitely a unit that would be clearing a lot of stuff. It has the AoE heal, AoE cleanse, three turn armor break, three turn slow. Those are definitely very strong units also, or things for TOA. It makes TOA autoing very safe. Siege offense, I've seen it here and there in teams, for example, with like a Farad and then another unit to it. Like it, there was this team with, I think, Farad, um, NFL, Retash, and then if you want to put it to Arena offense, you put a Leo next to it. Very strong team in general. And RTA, I would say in RTA, not as great in the later game. Uh, there are a few people that really play around the turn two that make it work, but it's not as great. But she has a lot of versatility that goes onto her whole kit. I don't give her 95 because I don't think she exceptionally shines in any of those regions. But I would say that she's very good in a little bit of everything, except for defense. Like defense, she's not that great for arena defense, siege defense. But if you don't have any other proper healer, she might be your arena defense to go unit as well. But NFL gets a 95. Most common builds are Vio Nemesis or Vio Will. You could put it to 100% resistance. And then just add a lot of stats to her because her healing comes from HP, I think, like her base HP, or it comes base attack. One of those OGs have it at base attack, one of them have base healing. But definitely a unit that you can sink a lot of stats into and she works very well that way. 
Then we have Rika. Rika is definitely one of those early game two shine units. I would say Rika is probably 95 for me, maybe higher. Hmm. Are we going to put Rika higher? I think I put Rika higher. And the reason is she's an early game god. Um, dungeons, I would say, well, since we cannot dot any of the dungeons anymore, she becomes a bit worse. Otherwise, you could put her to Dragons and you could put her to SF. You can still put her to Steel Fortress like your first teams to just clear uh, SF10. That's definitely an option. She's absolutely great in everything TOA. She is definitely still used in Siege Offense. You can even use her in Arena Offense if you have an Amber. Then she definitely be, still becomes good to pair with an Amber. But you kind of need an Amber. Or you can actually pair it with a Seth as well. And she's a very good late pick in RTA as well. That's often a must ban. So Rika is definitely a very good unit to pick up. And I think I'll put Rika on the 100 tier just because she's that good in the early game. And I actually happened to pour on my uh, account on the early game. She does help a lot with like the TOA and that kind of stuff. She's really nice for all of those things. So Rika's really nice. I would say just in TOA, she kind of falls off. And on defense, she's not a great unit. But she does shine a lot in the other places. Then we have Charlotte. And I think Charlotte goes to 95 for me. Definitely very strong early game. I wouldn't really put her to Dragons or to Giants probably because of the multi-hit. But it's definitely something that you could maybe even place in your first Giants team. T-Way Hard, really good unit. Siege Offense, don't see it used as much, but you can use it as a booster. So, for example, I've seen the team with a Lucian, Charlotte, and then a Bastet. And then you can make the Lucian very low on the crit rate because she actually has like a crit rate uh, lead for Wind. And that makes it pretty useful for that. You could do the same thing with Arena Offense. Once again, not a good defense unit, but also pretty good RTA unit. But shines a little bit less because you need some room quality to Charlotte, whereas... Rika, you just need the spare runes. Actually, I forgot to mention that. You just need the spare runes. You could put it to 100% resistance, but that's probably all you need to it. Charlotte, you actually need some accuracy in there. Well, Rika needs some accuracy as well, but Charlotte actually shines better the, more, uh, the moment you have better runes, better artifacts. So she's a little bit harder to use, but still an insanely good unit. So Charlotte gets a 95 for me. Then we go on to the Hell Ladies. First of all, starting with Beth. Unit that I don't value too much, um, I would say I do have it on my alt. I think it's pretty good unit for early game clearing as well. Now to think of it, because it has the S3 that armor breaks and then puts the anti-cleanse uh, block. Anti-cleanse block is kind of niche in PvE, not really used. Um, I would say that you might even be able to place it in your first Dragon's team. So it has some usability for that. It's good in TOA. Um, Siege Offense... I think people could actually use the Siege Offense as Armor Breaker. Um, Arena Offense, maybe as well. RTA, you can see it used here and there as well. So actually, Beth is not that bad. But would I put Beth on the level of Charlotte? I'm not sure. I feel like Beth is still a little bit worse. It is decent. It's definitely nice. But I think it's more of like the 90 ranks. I could be a little bit biased in that, that I don't really like Beth that much. But it's definitely a solid unit out there that if you have it, it's definitely very useful. So Beth gets a 90 for me. Common builds, you could put it on Fire. You could put it on Despair. You could also just put it on Swift and then just have high accuracy for that armor break. And they mainly base it on that arm break. Skill 2 also has some dots, which are pretty nice in general. Then we have Rocky. Rocky is, I would say, Siege Offense, Arena Offense, sometimes RTA a little bit, sometimes as well. Does have the cycling on the skill too. Does have very niche things on, especially Siege Offense, where you can insta-clear one unit. The issue is that she's often a little bit low on the damage. And you can you actually have to put quite some good runes to her to not get to the points like, oh, uh, I tried to snipe a unit and I had the anti-revive. But... I couldn't actually kill that unit, and therefore the anti-revive didn't work. I would say she's definitely niche, um, but is she really that great? No, I'm actually going to one down her. And seeing the Perna this low, I'm actually going to one up the Perna. Perna seems a little bit stronger than uh, these things, because Perna has a lot of PvE usage. can be used in Siege Offense as well. But yeah, common build for, I would say, Despair or Swift, or just like a pure damage build. But um, I would say that Rocky gets a 75 for me. Then we have Athna. Athna is definitely a unit for early game. I would say that she's definitely a better version of Rocky for PvE. Um, for TOA, you could actually put uh, Rocky or you could put Athna in TOA because she has a lot of cycling on that S2. She has very high base speed. It's just easy to put like high crit rate to her. Rocky also needs the high crit rate, but Athna for sure needs it. 
Siege offense, uh, I would say if you do bruiser siege offense, it's not that bad. Siege defense, it is an option. Arena defense could maybe, yeah, it could be a thing that could maybe trap someone because our base speed is very high on that 119. And RTA, an insanely good unit as well. So I'm going to put Athna at 95. I think she's very strong, but keep in mind, Athna is more of an end game unit. She could do decent in the early game. It's pretty nice to provide like a lot of stuns. But I would say she's definitely better in the late game than the early game. So Athna 95 for me. What did I say Athna 95? Mm. She does have that armor break cycling on the S2 as well. So I would definitely put her to despair in the early game. Late game you can more look towards like Swift and other builds like that. She's also definitely still good on Violet. Then we go on for some Dragonites. First off we have Chao. And Chao is... I would say you can say like, okay, it's like this early game uh, dungeon clear unit, but a lot of um, other units, because it's a really slow unit. He can do it, but it's incredibly slow and it doesn't really add too much than just him clearing that dungeon by himself because of his passive where he gets the healing in. Is that anything interesting? Not really, because I think a lot of the PvE units can, or like the, the, the uh, free to play units can do it pretty well in PvE as well. So for that, it doesn't really hold too much value. QA not. Siege offense here and there could be used. Siege defense never. Arena defense never. Arena offense not really. RTA also not that great. So Chao gets a 60 for me. Most common build is like Vio Nemesis, Vio Destroy for Siege offense, I would say. And then you want to go for speed or yeah, HP crit damage HP or speed crit damage HP and then high crit rates. Something like that. Uh, going in with Laika. Laika is more unique. Laika is one of those units in the correct siege offense. He will guarantee your victory. In the correct draft in RTA, it will guarantee your victory or most likely guarantee your victory. It's not that great on arena defense or siege defense, I would say, because then he becomes very predictable. But I would definitely say that this is a pretty solid unit, but it's just, it's used more niche. Like, I don't use my Leica too much, but if you use Leica at the right spot, he's actually very strong. So I'm going to give him one up for that. Leica gets 70 for me. And I would always put Leica on Vampire and then Vampire with either Blade or Vampire with Destroy or something like that. And then you just want to add a lot of damage to him. And you want to keep his HP pretty low, but his defense pretty high. So therefore, Vampire has more effect in that. And I would recommend 100 crit rate on him. Then we have Leo, and Leo is straight to 100. And Leo is just by the unique possibility that Leo has. So Leo has the possibility to make all of the speeds in the game the same as his speed, which is incredibly strong for Siege offense. Uh, incredibly strong for arena offense very good unit in rta pve and that kind of stuff not that great so this is one of those units that people might look at a tier list like that, uh, this and say like oh i'm i'm gonna get leo leo strong right leo's very strong but everything pvp related uh but he's that good in the pvp that i just don't value that he's early game and dungeons and that kind of stuff is kind of bad but he's that good in the PvP late game and so unique because not another unit can do even something remotely close to Leo. And that's why he straight up gets the 104. But if you were to look at it as like, oh, I need like an early game unit, Leo is absolutely not your early game unit. It's It comes a little bit later in like three, four, five months down the line where you actually start focusing on PvP, I would say. Next up, we have the monkey starting off with uh, Shiho. Shiho, I would say Siege Offense, kind of there, RTA a little bit there. TOA, you could place it to it early game. Um, maybe not that great, but also not that bad. I don't see the unit as much being used at the moment, so I'm just going to put Shiho at 70. I think he can have some usage here and there, especially if you actually throw good runes to him. But I don't really think that people would really pay... Like, it's not really a unit that I would say, like, oh, pick up this unit and you can do X, Y, or C that other units cannot already do. You have the unique mechanic that it does get the invisibility. You have some other units that can maybe spread the invisibility. That is somewhat unique. But is it really that great? I'm not really sure about that. So Shiho just gets a 70 for me. Because, yeah, you don't really see it anywhere defense. It's not really for something. It doesn't really bring too much uniqueness to the kit. Most of the time it's built on speed, uh, crit rate attack, and then Vio or something. And yeah, ju just those kind of builds. Then we have Mayo Wang. Uh, Mayo Wang is definitely a uh, PvP unit as well. Uh, PvE doesn't really bring too much to it. You can use it in the Rift Dungeons. It's not too bad there because it stacks over there. 
I would say for early R5, it's definitely a strong early R5 unit as well. It does have the defense lead if you don't happen to have the Fire Panda yet. Um, it's, it's good for those things. Arena offense wouldn't really use, the arena defense wouldn't really use it. Siege offense, it's definitely uh, a very good unit in there because it cannot get stunned against certain units. RTA, it's a really, really strong RTA unit. So I would say Mei Wang is a little bit more biased towards end game as well, but it's definitely a strong unit up there and I would give Mei Wang an 80. Most common builds about Mei Wang are Vio Plus, I would say Vio Nemesis or Vio Revenge or Vio Destroy. And then you want to add like high crit rate to him and keep him quite tanky because he gets a lot of attack from his passive and he gets a lot of speed from his passive so he can aim for other stats than that then we go for xing Zhe. it's kind of just a pvp unit as well but doesn't really shine too much into it it doesn't really shine too much in pvp and for that reason i would say that it's mainly just uh, siege offense you could maybe put it siege defense in lower ranks arena defense in lower ranks rta in lower ranks but it's really one of those units that doesn't really shine at anything. So Xing Zhe just gets a 65 for me. It is recently buffed. It might be a little bit better than I want to give it credit for right now. Because if it's stunned and it gets hit, it gets a fast attack bar. So it can go back to the stunning potential with the counters. But his counter rate is a little bit on the low side. And therefore I like him a little bit less. So uh, this monkey gets 65 for me. Common builds are also Vio Revenge. I think it's pretty much always Vio Revenge and then you just put like tankiness to it, crit rate, speeds and all this good stuff. Moving on to the Beast Monk starting off with Chandra. Chandra is definitely used for uh, Siege defense. Arena defense, I've seen it being placed here and there, but it's not as great. PvE slash early game, not great. TOA, not great. Definitely Siege offense, defense, arena, I would say maybe defense and definitely an RTA unit. But it's good at those things, but it doesn't really exceptionally shine at any of those things. Well, Siege Defense, no, I would say for Siege Defense, it has quite good value for Siege Defense. Um, mostly paired with an LD though, or something like that. But I definitely do see that it has quite some value in those things. I would say Chandra gets an 85 for me. Most common build is Despair. You could also build it on Violent and you mostly just want to build it as speed, HP, HP. Super tanky, make sure that he gets quite some turns in. Next up is Kumar. Kumar you see sometimes on Siege Defense and that's literally the only place you see Kumar. And even on Siege Defense then he doesn't really do too great. So I'm going to give Kumar just a 60 because it's... Just seen in one place and it's not really doing too great in there. So, and bolts also probably speed, HP, HP. You can put some crit rate to it, but he's kind of lackluster on damage, anyways. Then we have Retash, and Retash I want to place a little bit higher because you have the AoE armor break, which is a bit stronger. And uh, defense buff can be used together with like a Feng Yang, or you place it together with like a Verrat or any of those other units that are defense scaling, and that helps out quite some. So, it's more of just a siege offense unit. Arena Offense, well, I did mention Arena Offense before of Retash with Verrat, Annabelle, and Leo. But he just becomes good because he's paired with other good units. But he is a very good in slot at that position because of the defense buff armor break that he does provide, which is pretty nice. I would say early game, he shines a little bit more. The moment you get to later game, he's a bit worse. PvE related, he's not really that great. So Retash is okay to good-ish, but he's not really something anything unique that you really need so retage get a 70 for me also common build is still like speed hp hp you may want to put some accuracy to him then we go on with pioneers first off is a wusa and i'm gonna place wusa i think 95 might even place him 100 early game he's definitely very good for early game um just for like safety things it's gonna make your run slow but you could even put him to like dungeon teams early on you can put him to toa because it's like a safety net in toa siege offense absolutely exceptionally good unit siege defense it was used here and there but you don't see it as much anymore arena offense i could see him being used there arena defense i could see him being used there but it's not as common rta definitely a very good rta unit but he's pretty unique of being that high in base speed providing immunity having a great heal having a lot to it in his kit. I would say 95, maybe more of a PvP related unit, but you can also put him to early game PvE and I think he will do pretty decent in there. Next up is Chiwu. Chiwu is mainly uh, Siege Offense, Arena Offense and RTA, but I would say for Art uh, Arena, I would say it's one of the strongest, if not the strongest, nah, one of the strongest, it's not the strongest, but one of the stronger um, strippers in the game. 
because it has that skill three strip. And I would definitely say that with Chibu, you can unlock a lot of, um, yeah, you can just unlock a lot of arena options that otherwise are not available because you have the speed lead plus you have the strip and then also a slight pushback. So that adds quite a lot more than units that just provide a strip or do a strip with something else. Like that speed lead is definitely nice to keep in there. So you already have that lead covered. Uh, so Chibu gets a 90 for me, but that's mainly PvP related. Uh, common builds for Chibu, I would say, are Despair. Despair with, well, it doesn't really matter too much. You could put Swift to it. Swift is definitely not bad, but uh, Despair, I would say, is stronger. You can actually add quite some damage on this guy because the S3 is actually scaling with speed as well. So if you put max crit rate to him, max accuracy, you definitely want max accuracy on him. You can add quite some stats to him. I forgot about the uh, stats for Wusa. Wusa is just a file will in most cases. You could put him to Swift will or even Swift shield. But you want to go speed, HP, HP. Those are the important things for him. Now we have Pungbeak. Pungbeak can be used only in arena offense as sniper for certain things. It just has like that one hard hitting nuke. But I would say that even Pungbeak is not really best in slot for the thing that he can do. I would say that there's definitely better options out there than Pungbeak. He's kind of niche and kind of nice. And you have like the anti-revive mechanic on it and stuff. At least I think it's that one that he has. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. It is neat and nice with the right units and the right runes. He can definitely do good, but he doesn't really bring too much uniqueness to it where I would say like, oh, this is really a best in slot for the things he does. But I will give Pungbeak a 60. Most common builds is just pure on damage. That's the main thing. I'm going to exclude all of the Ifrits because all of the Ifrits are free to play. So they're not really that interesting to get into this tier list because this tier list is more of like, okay, what are the units that I'm aiming for? to get rather than like i can get any of those anyways they're all three good units like to be honest get all three of them because they're definitely good that's all i can say about those going in with polar queens alicia i would say alicia is probably best in slot but only at the uh rift rate of fire and that's probably the only thing she's really good at we used to use her in arena offense but she's not really that good at it at the moment as well never used an rta so alicia is just a 60. I would say for early game PvE stuff, she might be interesting because she does have those AoE, so she gets a little bit one up for that. Alicia gets a 65 for me. Not really a great unit. Most of the time, just build on a lot of damage. That's it. Then we have Brandia. And Brandia actually became the meta in a lot of uh, one-shotting teams in late game PvP or late game PvE. It's not a good unit in RTA, Siege Offense, Defense. I think in defense, I've seen some of them shine quite well. She can do a lot of damage sometimes, so that's pretty nice. Siege offense wouldn't really use, arena offense wouldn't really use, but she definitely has that uh, dungeon, or the dungeons in general. I could even put her to TOA because she does have those debuffs. If you put her in TOA, it would say more of despair, otherwise it's just rage. But she's that unique of how much damage she does that I will put her to 90. You could arguably say like, yeah, but Crow, which is a free-to-play 2A um, can do the same. Brandia does it a lot better. And especially if you focus towards uh, Steel Fortress. Steel Fortress is the right element. She does a lot more damage there. I would say for the Punisher script, she does a lot of damage there. You could even put it to Dragons. I definitely think she fits in the Dragons team as well. So yeah, there's a lot of options where she does quite a lot of damage and she becomes pretty mad in that. I think I felt you're a little bit too high because this thing is really a must for giants. This thing is not really a must for any of those other dungeons, but it just makes things a lot better. So I give 85 to her because in the end, everyone got a farm and having like the most meta farming units is definitely a nice thing. So Brandia is definitely high up for me. 85 on Brandia. Uh, then we have Tiana, and Tiana is also, I would say, 100? Is she 100? I would say... Mm, mm, da, 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 da. Well, she's worth nothing for anything PvE related. So I'm going to put her one down for that. She's worth nothing for PvE related. She doesn't have the same uniqueness level in PvP as a Leo has. She kind of does because she has that boost plus strip and it's guaranteed. However, there are other units, like for example, a Chiwu in the right team, like a Chiwu, Asher, Galleon plus Damage Dealer, has a lot more potential to outspeed things. And that's the issue of Tiana. A lot of the things that she does, you still kind of struggle with, like, okay, can I actually outspeed that team in arena offense? If something is swift and fast and also on the speed lead, would I not get outsped? Uh, if something is in arena uh, defense, would I not get outsped by them being faster than my Tiana? So Tiana is very good. 
but it's just for that. Plus, Tiana doesn't have that much value in RTA. Tiana's decent in RTA, but in late game, it's not really that great, whereas Leo is exceptionally good in RTA. So Tiana gets a 95 for me, but once again, Tiana is a very much PvP-focused unit. She gets a lot of credits for PvP stuff, but all of the other things are not that great. I would say T-Way Hard it's still, or T-Way Hell it's, can be used in those special stages too. Now next up is Poseidon. Poseidon is definitely a really great early game unit. Definitely a unit that you can put to your first uh, Dragons team. I would also say that... Uh, oh wait, I forgot the build for Tiana. Build for Tiana is very simple uh, speed. As fast as possible. You could make it 100 rest and will. That could be nice if you get outsped. But besides that, it's just a lot of speed. And you can put crit damage uh, skill 2 to it. Or just crit damage in general. You don't need crit rate because her S2 always crits. Forgot about those things. But yeah, Poseidon. Um, I would say Poseidon is a very strong unit, has speed scaling, so definitely a strong pair with like Chi Wu, Asher, Galleon. Uh, it's also a good pair with Tiana, Galleon in Siege, so definitely Siege and uh, Arena Offense unit. TOA, definitely strong. Dungeons can be used there. Early game definitely has some value. RTA can also be used. So I would give Poseidon a 95. It's, it's pretty much all about the skill 3 though. The skill 2 doesn't really do too much for most of these stages. But the skill 3 is definitely very nice. Best build on him is Despair, 100 crit rate and max accuracy. It's maybe a little bit hard to build, so you could also build that on Swift. But I definitely would recommend to go for very high accuracy, very high crit rate, and get those damage in that way. And you still have to make them pretty fast as well. But Poseidon gets a 95 for me. But it's a little bit more rune quality invested than, for example, if a red would be. And we have Okeanos, and Okeanos is not really a unit you see too much anymore. I would say that you can put it to um, yeah, Arena Offense, maybe. No, wait, Siege Offense, maybe. RTA, maybe. But it's not really that great. And so Okeanos just gets a 60 for me. Common builds, I guess, would be around like Violent still. Additional damage artifacts would make him work a little bit better, but he's still not really that great in it. Um, then we go for... Triton. Triton is definitely a unit that most people put on Swift. You could put Despair to it. You definitely want it very fast. It's one of those very strong AoE strippers. It is definitely meta still for Arena Defense. RTAs, you can see it here or there. Siege Offense Defense, you don't see it. PvE, you don't see it anywhere pretty much. So I would say he's decent to strong, but I would say that the Chibu is still stronger because of like just the speed lead, the offense potential and everything like that. But Triton is definitely a, still a strong stripper out there. And we'll give 85 to Triton. And as mentioned, just very fast and high accuracy. Bastet, definitely a strong early game unit if you want to get attack buff in. Siege offense, very strong. Arena offense, very strong. Early game RTA, definitely usable. TOA and that kind of stuff, you can also definitely still use it. So I give Bastet a 90. It's not really a unit I use too much personally. I would say it's more of like an early game focus because you can put very good runes there or you can put mediocre runes there. She's still kind of going to do the same thing. It's just depending like how fast she is. But it's definitely a very good unit that does what she does. And she has a very good skill 1 and skill 2 on pair with that. So you want some accuracy on her. But I will give Bastet a 90. I definitely do think that she's pretty nice. However, there are a few other units that do similar things. Like you could just throw a Megan at it. But it's just slightly worse. But since she's not that unique, I give her a little bit lower than that. And then we have Sekhmet. Sekhmet is definitely a unit you see for, I would say, Arena Defense. I tend to put her on Arena Defense sometimes because she has that high base speed. It can surprise a unit here and there. And she might be able to do like a skill 3 on Tiana and then disrupt the whole team. Um, but is she really good at it? Not really. Um, would I say Siege Offense or Defense? Siege Defense might be a thing, but it's also somewhat predictable uh, what she's going to hit. And if you put a Jemire against it, it's not going to do too much because that cooldown reset is just going to be cleansed by Jemire. She's very good for RTA, though. She's definitely a very good RTA unit if she lands. So if she would land all the time, she would be here. If she doesn't, she would be down here. No, just kidding. I think in overall, she's just pretty good for that. But I would give her a 75. Wouldn't really aim for her getting her that early because she's just... Yeah, she's kind of niche everywhere. She just really shines in RTA. But besides that, she, she's not really too great anywhere. Uh, then we have Hathor, which I would say is just an RTA unit. You could use it in a, a arena offense, a siege offense, if you want to bore yourself to death. Um, it is used in some TOA hell stages if you want to bore yourself to death. And that's kind of just Hathor. So it has some value, but it's not really great. 65 for Hathor. A uh, segment, by the way, is just a uh, swift build. So you could put it Vio or Despair as well. It's not too bad. Hathor, in most cases, just either Vio or Swift. And then you want to build it fast and high accuracy. 
Then we go on to the Fairy Kings. First of the Fairy Kings is going to be Samath. Uh, arena defense, but I would say that Vanessa in most cases is a strong arena defense than um, Samath is. In certain teams, Samath is better, but in most cases, Vanessa is better. Um, RTA can be used here and there. Siege offense is actually uh, another thing that you do use him as well. Arena offense, you also use him quite a bit. PV related, you use him never. So I would say I put him on 90 because I do think that he has... No, I'm actually going to put him 85. It's... Definitely a strong unit for PvP stuff, but it's just PvP stuff. And I wouldn't say that he really shines at the PvP stuff at the moment as well. So he's good, but not exceptionally good. Uh, then we go for Daphnis, which I think is just siege offense if your guild doesn't care that you're instantly losing 20% of the time. Because this unit, the moment that he misses his skills, you're going to instantly lose, more or less. So I don't really like this unit ever. Uh, RTA, it's not great. PvE, early game, it's not great. So Daphnis just gets... I would honestly say... Would I say that it's even lower than this? No, I'm actually going to one down you. And yeah, I think I put you there as well. I really don't like Daphnis. Well, Daphnis, I would say I give it 60. Like early game, if you don't have any other options, you could go for that. Thing. Like if, if you were not expecting to win more than 80% of the time in your siege, then he could be a thing to use. But I don't really like him that much. Ganymede, however, I think Ganymede is... Is Ganymede 100? Because early game, Ganymede is very good for TOA stuff. Ganymede is very good for siege offense stuff. Ganymede is definitely usable in arena offense. It's just not good on anything defense related. And it's not really good on dungeons. But Ganymede is very unique and I would definitely give Ganymede a 95. Ganymede is just a unit you want to build on violent, high accuracy for that skill 3, and then just speed. And maybe you want to have him in the right speed order where he moves just in front or just after a certain unit. And that's definitely a way to build him. Uh, I forgot about the the, uh, the builds for Samath and for Daphnis. Build for Samath is probably Despair Will or Despair Nemesis or even Rage Nemesis. You can see that sometimes. And this thing is pure, just pure damage. You want max accuracy, max crit rate. Moving on to the Pandas, Molong. Molong we see sometimes on Siege Defense, but not really that much anymore. Siege Offense, I would classify him pretty strong. Uh, dungeon slash early game, he doesn't do anything. RTA is kind of okay. I would give Molong probably just an 80. I would say he's good for RTA. He's good for some things in uh, Siege. But he's not really that crazy good where you see people use him all the time. Common Molong build is, if you want to go for a main snipe, then I would say Vampire is the best build. So Vampire, Speed, HP, HP. Could build him on Swift, could build him on Vio as well. Uh, then we have Feng Yang, and Feng Yang, I think I bring all the way to the top. And Feng Yang, the reason that he's all the way to the top, PvE early game, he's not that great, but he is exceptionally good for Siege offense. Um, Siege defense, he's not there. Arena offense, if you want to go for slow clears, he's exceptionally good there as well. He's pretty good for RTA as well. Now I'm going to one down him. He's really exceptionally good for a few things, but in other things he's not used at all. So, But he's definitely really good on the PvP things where... He, well, he's called the Unfair Bear by the old YDCB. So A is definitely for Siege and Arena Offense. He's definitely the Unfair Bear. RTA, if you build a real team around him, you could spam him too. But in higher ranks, RTA is not used as much. But yeah, the Feng Yang goes to 95 for me. I would say that most common builds are triple defense if you always pair it with a Leo, as I do. If you don't always pair it with a Leo, then it's probably speed, defense, defense. Or you can put some HP to it, but you want to have decent HP to him as well. And he does a lot of damage on the defense stuff. So he's also a very good pair with units that have like the defense buff in there. Going on to some ponies. Uh, Amelia, which actually provides defense buff, used to be a very good unit because it provided the defense buff a lot, plus immunity a lot. However, we currently also have Alaya, which kind of does the same thing, but better, and then also heals. So therefore, she kind of fell off. She was good in Siege Offense, and it just pretty much Siege Offense, and there were all there to it. But I would say that Alaya is just so much better in Siege Offense right now that she doesn't really shine as much anymore. It's still a good pair with Bolvrick, but... Yeah, for that reason, I'm just going to place her at 70 because I would say she is used in Siege Offense quite well, but it's just Siege Offense. And it's not even that she's best in slot there because there, I would say an Alaya or something like that almost feels like a better fit anyways. So I give 70 to Amelia. Most of the case, you want to build it 100 res and then just a lot of tankiness and on the right speed. 
Uh, Helena, definitely used for Siege offense. I would say for Arena defense, Siege defense, not. I could not. Her AI is that bad that you don't really want to put her to TOA or anything PvE related. I would say in RTA, she is usable. So she has the usability in RTA, which makes her 75 for me. Most cases, she is via low speed as a Leo counter. You can actually put some speed to it. And then if you're fighting a whole team that has no immunity, you would clap them pretty hard. I'd say Vio is the strongest build, but Dispair is also an option and you most likely want to wield that. Uh, Diana, I would say uh, Siege offense possible. Arena offense, not really. RTA, yeah, very much just a pure PvP unit. RTA, you don't see it as much anymore. It used to be pretty strong in RTA meta, but currently you have a whole bunch of counts to it that just make her life pretty difficult. But I would say she gets a 75 from me as well. But once again, just a pure PvP unit. You want to put her to um, probably HP, crit damage HP or HP, crit rate HP. She gets a lot of uh, turns from her passive anyway, so that kind of helps out. I would say Siege offense, she's pretty good still. That, that part she's pretty good at. But yeah, probably Vio. That's the main thing you want to go. Uh, Josephine, unit you mainly see RTA, doesn't really shine too much into it. Was pretty good in the Special League because a lot of people were playing Claras and that kind of stuff. But I would say she's kind of just a luck sacking RTA unit. If she procs all the time, she's very good. If she doesn't, she's kind of bad. Arena offense, siege or like siege defense, arena defense wouldn't use a siege offense, maybe here or there. So Josephine gets a 70 for me. Uh, most common build is via will, and then you want to put crit damage on the slot 4, HP on the 6, speed on the 2. And you don't have to aim for that much uh, crit rate, but I definitely would recommend some accuracy. Ophelia is definitely a unit you see on Siege Defense. Arena Defense, I don't think it's great there. Arena Offense, it's not too bad either. RTA, maybe lower ranks it could do a little bit good, but I would say it's just uh, Siege Offense and Siege Defense, so I would give her... Probably a 70, because I would say she's decent to good at it, but it's not really something like super exceptional, like, oh, this this is the best unit in that defense or something. She does have a few defense where, like, especially paired with an Odin, that could be kind of annoying. I think I've seen a lot of those. I, I think in lower ranks, she would do pretty good. In higher ranks, she's not used, but in lower ranks, I think this is pretty good. And I think this is also a pretty much in lower ranks guaranteed win on uh, offense, so that can help out quite some. Uh, Lewis kind of the same thing and yeah pretty much I would say lesser used in siege defense but better in siege offense but it's just siege offense unit so kind of one down her but she is in siege offense probably better than her sister uh, but she's not used in anything else she's not used in RTA or anything else but she's definitely very good in uh, siege offense and then siege offense the best pair that she actually has is a hey gang next to it and then with that, a damage dealer, for example, could be a Rika, could be a Tessarion or something like that. Uh, for these two, it's just, you could max resistance them and then just high speed and high HP. Abelio. Abelio is definitely a good arena um, defense unit. Arena offense, you don't use it. PvE, early game, you don't use it. Siege offense, you could use it, but it's not as great. Siege defense, you don't really use it. RTA, definitely a good unit in there, so... I would say that this is pretty much, yeah, I think it's on similar tier as uh, Vanessa. It's good in like two things. It's pretty good in them, but I wouldn't say that they're the, well, I would say Vanessa can be best in slot for the speed lead on defense, but Abelio, you have some replacements though, so it's not a must, but Abelio is the same thing. Like there's, people are used to fighting Abelio. So he can be very annoying. He can be very, uh, yeah, annoying against Cleavers if you play RTA and that kind of stuff. So do I give him one up for that? No, it's just not used in anything Siege Offense or Arena Offense. So it's it's just defense and it's just RTA. But he's pretty good in those things. So 85 for a belly of me. Um, if you want to build him for defense, it's mainly just very tanky on HP and defense. If you want to build him for RTA, you do see often that people go for uh, speed, crit rate, defense, or even defense, crit damage, defense. And just add a lot of the damage stats to him. That's also an option. Uh, Balanus, I would say... TOA, pretty good. Siege offense, pretty good. Arena offense might be used. Never really see it. RTA might be used. Don't see him too much. So I'm going to give Balanus an 80. Uh, most common builds could be either just going full on damage with Swift or Rage. Uh, Despair is pretty common on him. You do want to put some accuracy to him, some crit rate. I would say that double will plus a shield is also not a bad uh, thing on him because then he has like a full will rune still during the state where he doesn't get like the attack bar if he might not get the full attack bar on his S3. 
Uh, then we have Tyrannies, used to be for Siege defense and Arena defense, but it's not really great in those. I would say that Tyrannies is probably even 55 for me. It's, yeah, it's a reviver, but it doesn't really add too much. There, there's a lot better units than uh, Tyrannies out there. I would even arguably say that Eladriel is a better unit because of the AoE revive and the straight up heal. This thing doesn't even heal, and the damage of him is also kind of mediocre, so Tyrannies gets a 55 for me. It's not really a great unit. Uh, Bolt for Terranese, I would say probably Vio on. You can put some damage to him with crit rate or crit damage, but Vio and defense, the, uh, and then some speed, I guess. Bolvrig. Bolvrig is exceptionally good in TOA Hell, like really uniquely good in TOA Hell. So I think Bolvrig goes 95 for me. It's not that great in the early game, but PvP related, it's pretty much a uh, guaranteed win in Siege offense. You can use it to Siege uh, or Arena offense, uh, certain things as well. It is pretty decent in RTA, but the most of the value he gets is how unique he is for TOA Hell. Because TOA Hell, he can just annihilate those units with a lot of damage, a lot of healing. And he's the only unit that can do it as the way he does it. So Wolver gets 95 for me, mainly for TOA Hell usabilities. And that just makes TOA Hell a lot easier. But still being very good in Siege Offense, being very unique there as well. It's just mainly those things. Defense anywhere, you wouldn't really use him. His AI is pretty bad for that. Uh, most common build is just pretty tanky. You could put him on the most common build in RT8 would be Shield, Will, and Revenge. But if you use him somewhere else, uh, it would be just fine to just Will him on Shield or Will with uh, Swift or anything like that. Some people tend to put him on Violent. I don't like him on Violent as much, but that is my take on it. But yeah, that's Bolvrik on 95. Uh, then we go for Odin. Odin is definitely a Siege Offense Snipe unit, Siege Defense uh, typically used. Uh, arena Offense and Defense not much, RTA not much, anything PvE related not much as well. So I would say I give him a 80. Mm, yeah, I would give him 80 because, well, actually, no, no, no. I give, him a lit I give him 85 because you can use him in R5 as well. And R5 is definitely not bad as well. So for R5 purposes, I give him a little bit higher than that. And then it's just mainly Siege Offense, Siege Defense. You can put him to RTA, but that is about it. But he's pretty good in Siege Offense and Siege Defense, especially on lower ranks. Then on Siege Defense, he becomes pretty good. Uh, then we have Christina, unit that uh, a lot of people like to meme on, but I would say for Siege Offense next to a Leo, you do have to have Leo. Without Leo, the unit is pretty much worth this. But with a Leo, she's actually pretty decent, I would say. Well, with the Leo, she's kind of like 65 for just the arena offense that she does. Without it, she's pretty much straight up a 50. She's unusable. So I'm going to put her for that reason on 60. She's kind of like a punk beak. She has that really unique thing that she can do, but she's not super crazy at it. Plus, you need one other uh, good pair for it. She, she's pretty good at it, at her nuke. She's just fuel on damage and you want to have her as slow as possible and then steal some tanky stats. But yeah, that's just pretty much that. Itchy nose. Uh, then we have Belial, and Belial used to be a uh, meta for uh, Giants. It's no longer meta for Giants. It's not even that great for Giants. There's a lot of better options right now. It is very meta for Siege Offense. Absolutely insane unit for Siege Offense over there. It has to be paired with Camilla, which is like the highest on this tier list pretty much. Um, but I would say it's just good for that arena offense. Uh, you can use it on inter-server here and there. RTA maybe here and there, but it's not as great. But I'm going to put Belial on 75 because it's really good at that one team or one or two teams where he's good at. But besides, that doesn't really shine too much. But Belial 75 for that. You can still put him towards Giants and Dragons, but you need like specific teams for those. Uh, most commonly, he's just built on pure damage, so Rage Blade or Rage Destroy uh, for Siege. Uh, then we have Bale, which is not bad for Arena Offense, not bad for Siege Offense, but there's a lot of other units that can kind of do something similar, but better. So this unit is not really used at all. I would say he's maybe a little bit undervalued, because I think he's actually pretty strong, but... Yeah, I, I just don't really see him being used too much. I would actually give him to 65. 65 because I think he's actually undervalued and I think he's actually pretty nice. And early game, he's not a bad unit for doing some damage and that kind of stuff as well. So early game PvE, except for the dungeons maybe, he might not be too bad. TOA, he might not be too bad. So RTA, no one's going to use him though. 
But uh, damage that, or for him, you just want to go damage that as well. And I think his skill 3 has a guaranteed, uh, or it has like the elemental advantage, so you only need like 85 crit rate, or it just doesn't glance, and one of the two. But then if it, it just doesn't glance, then you actually do need the 100 crit rate. But I don't exactly remember on that, but he's a pretty decent unit. I did use him some points for um, a cleave with Leo. He was pretty good at it. And next up we have Mephisto. Mephisto is just kind of your counter into revives. We don't really have too much of a revive meta these days. It is useful here and there on Siege Offense, RTA, kind of same thing. But uh, you could put it to PvE as well uh, on the Giants mainly. So for the reason that it's usable in Giants and a few other things to a mediocre level, I'm going to put Mephisto on 70 and it's mainly also a unit to, on just damage. If you want to put it towards RTA, which is possible, but it's not used as much because we don't have like really a, a revived meta with Nana or anything. So for that reason, uh, just that if you want to put it to RTA, a little bit more tanky, maybe on Vampire or something, and that would be your way to go. Barbara and starting off with a Beast Rider. So Barbara first Beast Rider, I would say Siege Offense can be used. Siege Defense not, Arena Defense Offense not, PvE not. RTA can be used, but not really too great at it, so Barbara gets a 70 for me. In most cases, it's built either Vio and Fast or Swift and Fast, and that's about it. Uh, Marsha, I've seen it being used on Siege Defense. I've seen it being used on Arena Defense. Actually, this is one of the highest base speed units, so if you put Swift to it, and it would go for a Lucian and then just one-hit the Lucian or one-hit the Tiana or something like that, it could be kind of fun for Arena Defense. You don't really see it too much, though. Siege defense, you see it here and there. Siege offense can be used. Arena offense, not really PvE related, not at all. But RTA, a really, really strong RTA unit. One of the stronger RTA units out there. I would give it probably an 85 because it's mainly just RTA and the rest, it's not really there. But mainly for RTA, 85 on the Masha. Once again, very PvP related units. PvE doesn't do too much. Savannah uh, used to be one of the highest ranked units because of PvE usability. I had an account where I had Savannah early game and I had an account where I had a Rika early game. I can tell you that much that Rika did way better than a Savannah would ever do. So for that reason, I'm going to put Savannah a little bit lower. Savannah is also not really meta in Siege defense anymore. It's not longer meta in Siege or arena defense. Arena defense can be used. Arena offense can be used. Siege offense can be used. So it can be used everywhere, but it's no longer as crazy. Also for RTA, it's not really used as much anymore. But she's still pretty good. But I would say she definitely fell off that she's no longer as crazy good. But Savannah still gets a 90 for me. Most cases you want to bolt her on... Oh, I actually missed the bolts of uh, Marsha. Marsha in most cases, especially for RTA, is Vio uh, Nem. And, uh, or Vio Will. You could put it to Swift though to surprise people. Uh, Savannah, I would say probably Swift because she awakens into resistance, which makes it pretty hard to build because you need high accuracy, high crit rate. So you could even put crit rate slot 4 to her, but crit damage slot 4 is also fine. And then you want pretty high attack as well. She's definitely pretty hard to build, but 90 on the Savannah. Uh, then we go for Art Masters. First off, Heigang. And Heigang, you might say, is just RTA, but actually Heigang is very strong with Siege Offense, mainly paired with units that have constant uh, buffs. So it could be a Riley, could be an Alaya, could be a Lewis, could be a bunch of units. Definitely good in there, and definitely a unit that's very good in Siege Offense. Or um, Siege Offense and RTA, it's just that. PvP, PvE, nothing. Heigang, I would say 85. Uh, best build for Heigang is that he has to be faster than the rest of your team on Despair. If you can't make a Despair, Swift is fine, but Swift is a lot weaker. And you want to be max accuracy on the S2. That's, those two things are very important. So I would give Heigang an 85, but it's just a PvP unit. Um, Joe Gun, mainly PvP unit as well. It's arena offense. Um, there's a bunch of things. like You could say he's unique for giving attack buff plus strip. But he's actually not unique because there is a Aquila, which is the, uh, what's it called? It's a brownie magician on wind, which pretty much does the same thing. It also strips and then it gives uh, attack buff. So Jogun's value is not really that much at the moment. So I would give Jogun probably a 70. Jogun is definitely not bad if it's your only stripper. Like on my alt, it's actually my only stripper. Then I would build this because it's slightly better than Aquila, I would say. But if you don't have a Jogun, you can just put Aquila there. And it's maybe okay for RTA, it's maybe okay for Arena Offense, but 
it's not really that great. So Jogun gets a 70 for me. Would be best built on this pair, otherwise just swift and outspeeding. Then we have Chung Pong, and Chung Pong is really good for TOA Hell. Is really good for TOA in general. Is pretty good in siege offense. Is pretty good in arena offense still. Not really used as much in arena offense, but it's still pretty good. And it's exceptionally good for RTA. Early game, also pretty good unit for, I would say, would you put it to your first Giants team? It's a little bit too many multi-hits for my liking, but it's definitely a unit that you want to have at some point because it's just so good in so many things, which I'm not sure about if I actually want to place you one higher because it's one of the better RTA units out there right now, especially if you're somewhat more on the early game. Um, it's good siege offense, very good siege offense still. A main pair is a Tiana with a Galleon. Uh, arena offense is also Tiana Galleon, but you could also put like Chivu and then this thing. So there's a lot of options to it. Plus his backup of Strip and then Armor Break. This whole kit is pretty loaded. So I would say Chunkpong is pretty high up for me, but I'm going to lower it one down because you also need some good room quality to make him work, I would say. Yeah, I would say 95 on uh, Chunkpong, but I'm very tempted to put him high. Uh, main build for Chunkpong could be Swift and then you can actually add quite some damage to him. Or you put him on Vio, and that's the main thing for RTA. And you want to put him on Will and Max Accuracy on the S3. Uh, then we go into more. More is a Arena Defense unit here and there. Siege Defense unit here and there. Could be used Siege Offense. PvE related, not really that great. RTA, really good unit. So definitely has its shine in there. And I think I put more on the 95 as well. It's nothing PvE, whereas Chunkpong does have PvE value as well. No, I'm actually going to put Chunkpong in there because Chunkpong has everything. It has the PvE value, it has the PvP value, and it has Siege value, it has value everywhere. So that's, yeah, Chunkpong is an honor for me. Um, but the more. More is, doesn't have the PvE value, and besides that's pretty much a similar thing. Very good for RTA, very good for Siege Offense. Arena Offense, you might be able to use it. Siege Offense, I can see it used here and there. It's not as great, but it's definitely good. But Siege Defense, you definitely see him out there as well. Most common build is Despair, but you see a lot of people on Vio or Swift as well. And then he really shines on those additional damage artifacts, but you still want to have high accuracy on the uh, S2. You can put him on slot for crit rate, but uh, speed, attack, attack is also fine. You can even put him like speed, HP, HP. So th there's a lot of builds viable for this guy. Uh, then we have Douglas. Uh, Douglas is good in Siege Offense. Arena Offense if you want to have some slow bruiser thing. RTA, definitely a good unit, but um, also sometimes you think he should win and then he doesn't. Siege Offense, kind of the same thing as well. I would say he's a good unit, but not really too crazy out there. And it's just, just a PvE unit, or a PvP unit, nothing PvE related. So I think I'll put Douglas actually at 75, because often of the times you think he should clear your shit, and then he still dies while doing it, because, well, uh, in the end, the glancing is still a 50-50. I would say he's strongest placed in Siege Offense or Arena Offense, where you're fighting a lot of uh, wind. Then he's pretty strong, but in RTA, he's often kind of lacking as well. I would say 75 for that. And then um, the build is always, almost always Vampire and then Vampire Blade, Vampire Nemesis, something like that. And then uh, make sure that you have high crit rate and high attack. And we have Kashmir, and I think this is the worst unit in the game still. Uh, it was buffed 16 times, but it still does 2 lackluster damage. Wouldn't recommend to build this. That's just pretty much... I, I might be biased on that one, but I've literally seen no one ever use this unit. So, yeah, but I wouldn't really place it. Uh, Bornier, I would say, is not too bad in Siege Offense, but I also feel like just another unit on Destroy would probably do as good or better. Might be good for inter-server things, but I don't really like this unit too much as well. The only perks about this unit is that he doesn't need any double mons and he can still work. But is that really worth too much? Yeah, that's worth something in the early game. But I feel like he's not really that great. Like into full-on bruiser teams, he might be okay, so I'm going to give him 60 for that. But I feel like any destroy unit would kind of do similar or same anyways. And that's just like his whole kit. You can just give any unit a rune set to and then they will do the same, right? So I don't really like this unit uh, for its uniqueness. That's not really there. Uh, most common builds probably just full on tank. Carnal, uh, Siege Defense unit, sometimes Arena Defense unit, yeah. RTA unit, yeah. PvE, mm, you could put him to TOA, but I don't think he would do as great there. But he's definitely a good RTA unit. So he's a little bit good everywhere. So I will give Carnal a 85. You can put Carnal on crit damages, crit rates. 
but I would say that just speed HP, HP with additional damage artifacts on HP is also definitely fine for him. If you want to build him towards defense, I would recommend him higher on HP and that kind of stuff. So 85 for Cardinal for that. And he's mostly always Vio uh, Will. Uh, Sagar is, I would say, just an RTA unit. It's a very good RTA unit, but I wouldn't see Sagar used anywhere else than just RTA. So... Carnal has a few things. Carnal is lesser used in RTA, but he's used in a bunch of other things. So for that reason, I put um, Cigar a little bit lower. Like if you're PvE or you don't care about PvP, Cigar is not really going to do too much for you. Most common build is Vio Will or Swift Will. And then uh, his base stats are pretty low. So getting away with Swift is not too bad as well. And then high accuracy on that and very tanky. Uh, Shizuka hard nerfed unit at the moment. Her S2 kind of makes it that she's often in a weird spot. Like, oh, you use the S2 and then the unit that you revived still doesn't have the skills up. S3 has some usability, but I would say you can use her in TOA Hell. It's kind of funny in there. She's unique in there to spread all of the buffs and debuffs that were there. But is she that useful for that? I don't know. Siege offense, kind of the same thing. Like you could use it with the Shiho. RTA, it has some value, but you know, honestly, I never liked this unit. It to me really feels like a Luxac unit. Like if you resist um, a cigar skill three or a segment skill three, then you can win based on that. It's like yes, that's your only win potential. Yeah, but I'll give her a seventy because she's some usability here and there. Most common builds is hundred resistance and then tanking and fast. Uh, Tomoe is I would say just an RTA unit. Really wouldn't put it to siege offense, arena offense, or anything like that. She's Pretty good in RTA, but she's just an RTA unit for me. So I would give Tomoe probably a 75. Because you also have to... No, I'm actually going to give Tomoe a 70. And the main reason is that you need a very specific team with Tomoe to make Tomoe interesting. If you don't have a specific team around her, she doesn't really do too much for you, even in RTA. So she's good in RTA. Don't get me wrong, in RTA she's definitely higher up there. But she's only an RTA unit, and she's not exceptionally good in RTA. So 70 for me. Most common build is Despair with high accuracy. And then mostly Will. Could be Revenge, but mostly Will. Uh, Giyu is also just an RTA unit. You could maybe put it in Siege Offense, but I don't really think it's that great in it. Uh, but also for RTA, she's not really doing too great. She's very dependent on how many Dispairs does she land. That's also her common build. Dispair, maybe 100 Resistance. But I feel like I don't really like Giyu all too much anymore. But I'll give her a 60. She's occasion RTA, but kind of bad still. Going on to the Mages, a Nana first. Nana's definitely still used for Siege Defense. Can be used for Arena Defense. PvE related is actually not that bad. I tend to use my Nana in the stages of the Labyrinth. Because then if a unit randomly dies, a Nana just revives them. So that's pretty decent in there. RTA can be used here and there, but you have to have the specific team. But she is used a little bit all over the place. She's not really shining in any of those places, but she's kind of used all over the place. And she's pretty unique in her revive ability to revive on passive and then multiple times as well. So Nana gets an 85. Plus she has that AoE armor break, which is a nice setup in general for like a support unit. So Nana 85. Most common build is Despair, but Vio is also viable for her. Uh, then we go Coco. Coco is sometimes used Siege Defense, not really that great. Uh, siege Offense, pretty decent. Uh, she has that one-hit mechanic, which is definitely nice out there. RTA, not really used too much, but can be decent as well. I'm going to give Coco a 70. I do use her from time to time, but she's actually not really that great. So she kind of needs to, on Siege Defense, she needs to proc to kill anything. If she doesn't proc, she's probably going to get killed anyway. So 70 for Coco. In most cases, you want to go Vio with... Uh, no crit rate, and you just want to aim pure for attack. And then some tanky stats. Uh, Momo, kind of a similar thing, but then even worse. We, I would say Momo has some more value on Siege defense. Arena defense, that kind of stuff, not really. Siege offense, I haven't really seen people use Momo on Siege offense. So I would say she's more just a Siege defense unit than not an RTA unit at all. Whereas Coco, you could use an RTA. So 65 for Momo for me, and it's probably just a fire with some damage. Uh, with like crit rate, crit damage, only four, I think. Not even sure. But yeah, just some damage builds on that. Miles. And uh, Miles is just a PvP unit. It's PvE, not worth anything. But Siege Offense, definitely usable. If you go Siege Offense with just like a Raccoon or a Riley, or yeah, even just Riley, Elias, or Prahas, or anything like that. Siege Offense, definitely strong. Um, 
Siege defense, you see it here and there. I don't like it as much, but it's definitely still used quite some on Siege defense. And he's really good in RTA. That's the main thing. Like, he's really, really good in RTA. Especially lower ranks, but even high ranks, he's definitely good for RTA. So Miles is definitely high up there, but it's just a PvP unit. Keep that in mind. Most common build is pretty much always Vio Shield. And then you just want to build him tanky and some accuracy in there. You could put him Swift, but Vio is just so much stronger on him because he gets a lot of speed already. Uh, John... I would say one of the better bombers, if not the best bomber out there right now, because he has the bomb plus the cool time increase, which is pretty nice, and then cycling on the S2 to get the bomb back. Um, but bombs, you know, honestly, is just arena offense. Wouldn't really put it in Siege. You can put it in Siege, but in Siege, there's too many cleansers anyways, most of the time. RTA, it's decent to nice, but you can't really have that many opportunities where you need, like, the cleanse, so... You could put it to TOA Hell as well, or TOA Heart. I think it's not a bad unit for TOA Heart or TOA Hell, but I think most of the units will die before the bomb goes off in the first place. So I would say John gets a 70 for me, and that's not because John is a bad unit, it's just because bombers are not really into the meta that much. But I think he can be used here and there. Uh, most common builds is just uh, Fatal plus Will, and then you want to have Accuracy on the max for the bomb itself. Oliver, still the unit that people don't like a lot, but he's... Definitely still there. Uh, Siege offense, defense not used. PvE not used. Arena offense can be used as speed lead. Um, it's not really the best, but a lot of the speed leads, like you have the other 33 speed leads, as in Vanessa and Samath, so sometimes an Oliver fits a little bit better in that. Um, and it's just an RTA unit. Very good in RTA though, but it's just an RTA unit. So I'm going to give Oliver 85, because he's very good in RTA, but if he has no value in any of the other things, it kind of drops down his rank, and yeah, I think it's... Uh, would I do all of her dirty? Mm, no, I don't think so, because I think, like, Vanessa's even used on more places than Oliver is. Like, to be honest, maybe I should even place Vanessa one up. Hmm. D -d 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 at, all the way at the end, I'll see if I want to replace a few units. Uh, going on with Alaya, and I think Alaya is insanely strong. Alaya goes straight to 95 for me. Alaya is pretty much a siege offense insta win. Arena offense if you want a bruiser insta win. Um, RTA can be used here and there. It's actually not that bad. It's kind of undervalued. But for those two things, it's very strong. Early game and dungeons, you're probably not going to use it. You could actually use it in some of like the more niche dungeons out there. Like uh, Labyrinth, I actually tend to use it. TOA Heart, you probably don't really use those things. But TOA Heart, it could be like your safety net kind of thing. But... Mainly for Siege offense and Arena offense, she's insanely, insanely good. I would say that she is best paired with a Feng Yang. If you don't happen to have a Feng Yang, she kind of falls a little bit off. But she still has some usabilities without that as well. Uh, maybe I'll one down her because she's not on defense anywhere. If she was on defense anywhere or like better in RTA, it would be higher. So Alaya gets a 90 for me. Next up is a Nora. Nora's mainly used for Siege defense, Arena defense. RTA used to be used, but not as much. I would say for Siege Defense and Arena Defense, she's pretty good. Can also be used for early game PvE things because of the uh, uh, Provokes and the Dots and that kind of stuff. So, yeah, she's pretty good in TOA actually as well. Uh, but I'm going to give her 85 because she's good at those things, but also not insanely, insanely good. Well, actually, no, I give her 90 because she's actually pretty decent. Plus has PvE value, plus can be used in RTA. In RTA, you don't really see it too much, but can be used there. Uh, most common build for Alaya is just full tank, 100 resistance. And then how much speed ever you need. If you always pair with a Leo, zero speed is fine. Nora, you want to go either Vio or Despair. And then Revenge is pretty annoying on top of that. You could go Will and then you want to have fast with accuracy. Next up is a Liam. Uh, it's used for some of the PvE dungeons. It's used in the fastest... Um, PC team right now and fastest dragons team right now, but you need pretty good runes to make those teams work. It's not that Liam is always going to use his S3 on like 50% of deck bar and then wipe the whole boss. Would be nice if he did, but his AI is not as great for that. He's pretty decent though. Um, would you use him in Siege Offense? Siege Offense is not bad. Defense not. Arena Offense not. RTA could be used, but it's not really as great, but... I would say that I gave him 75 because he does have that uniqueness that some other units... Or do I give him 70? No, I give him 75. He does have that uniqueness that you can use it for quite some things where you cannot really play something else. Most common build is just pure damage. 
Carlos, uh, I would say used arena offense in some occasions with like a Lucian, for example, Leo, Lucian, and then uh, Carlos. Um, other things where you could maybe use him is RTA. Defense, you don't really use him. Ari or Siege, I haven't really seen him too much. RTA is okay, but he's also not really crazy good. But he's a good counter into Sony, which is a very strong unit at the moment. But 75 for Carlos for me at the moment. Most common build is, I would still say Vampire, but you can also just go pure damage on him. High crit rate, high damage, still a little bit of tankiness. Dominic, used to be an insanely good unit. I think on Siege defense and maybe even into server defense might still not be that bad. Siege defense is kind of predictable. He's going to hit into arenas and that kind of stuff. But if you build him strong enough, he can actually burst through it on a proc or two. RTA, he's maybe somewhat undervalued right now. I think he's still pretty strong, but you kind of need an attack buffer next to him to make him strong enough. So I'm going to put Dominic on 75. Still the best in slot unit if you're farming Elunia, which is the dimensional whole uh, dungeon. I would say Dominic is absolutely best in slot for that dungeon still. Uh, Dominic is mainly built on damage. I would say speed, attack, attack, or triple attack, and then Vio something. Mostly Vio will. Uh, going on to Minato, one of the units that's been more recently used mainly for RTA. Uh, Siege off or Siege defense and Arena defense wouldn't really seem being used. Minato is not bad in RTA, but he's also not really crazy good in RTA. Like the moment you know how to play against him, and that's just hit him in the off turn, and then hit him hard in the off turn, like apply debuffs in the turn where you can't hit him, and then hit him hard in the turn afterwards, you will clear him. It's not that big of a deal. So I would give Minato 70. He is commonly used as a 100 res on Vampire, but yeah, he's not really that great. You can just stun him on the off turn and then you just kill him that way. But Vampire is the main way and then also damage after that. Uh, Ren. Ren is actually pretty interesting. I am thinking about Ren on like Arena defense. It might not even be that bad. Is he bad on Siege defense? Siege defense, he might be pretty bad. But Arena defense, if he goes for the Absorb, I'm not sure what his AI is looking like. If he uses a lot of S3, he could be pretty annoying. Um, RTA is definitely pretty good uh, up there as well, but he's also not really being used that much that I think people don't really know how to counter it properly. I think that's more of his issue rather than him being like insanely good, but mainly just an RTA unit for now, I would say. So 75 for Ren. I would say maybe in PvE things like Labyrinth, he might be not too bad, but I don't think he's that great. In most cases, he's built Swift, but I think you can also put him Despair or Vile. Uh, Zen. Zen is just used for siege defense, but he's or sometimes siege or arena defense, but he's not really good at it. Like I feel like he has the some of the RNG factors in there, but he's not really doing too much. Like he has the the uh, yeah, there's just better units on that on defense than him, and he's just not doing a great job. Most of the time he is swift. You could put him on fire as well, high accuracy, and then you can put some damage to him. But I feel like he's somewhat lackluster on those things. Like he's not really doing too well. I give him a little bit up because he does have the RNG factor you might lose to, but it's just Siege defense and Arena defense. RTA wouldn't really uh, use him. Then we have Manon. Uh, Manon is still used for Siege defense, Arena defense, RTA a little bit, but all of that not really too much. But it's still kind of out there, also just a PvE or a PvP unit. I would say Manon is probably a 70. She still has that annoying mechanic. Like, if the annoying mechanic triggers hard, you might actually still lose to it. So Manon goes a 70 for that. Fire Holy Berry Cookie. Uh, I think it's a lot worse. It's really not used and don't even know what build. Oh, the build for Manon, by the way, in most cases, it's Vampire or Vio. You can put Destroy to it, especially if you put it on defense. Will is pretty decent as well. And then just tanky stats on defense and then some damage with crit rate, crit damage. This thing, I think it's just pure defense is what you want to build it, and then bio or something, but barely see this unit. This unit is a little bit used more for siege offense, but that is just about it. It's not too bad for siege offense, but I also don't think it's super great. It's also just bio style build. Then we have the heavily buffed pure vanilla cookie. I would say very strong in siege offense, very strong in arena offense. Does have to have the right pair to be strong in that. Can be used in RTA. Uh, PvE, I think it's not even that bad. Like, if you put it to, like, a TOA team, it's not even that bad. It does have the Oblivion against some annoying units. It does have the healing. And just the combination of speed buff, immunity, and attack buff becomes very strong. So, Pure Vanilla Cookie goes 95 for me. It is just the setup unit, so that unit is not going to kill anything. But there's a lot of options to having this unit in your kit. And it's pretty nice in general. 
It's just that on Siege defense and Arena defense, you can't use it anywhere. Now, I'm going to lower one down because it's not used on uh, any of the defense things. But yeah, definitely a very strong unit to have out there. In most cases, just build Swift as fast as possible. Lucia is mainly used as, I think, um, Arena offense. No, wait, Siege offense counter, RTA counter, and just those two things. She is pretty good at the job, but she uh, counters really niche things, which is attack bar pushbacks. There are a lot of attack bar pushbacks, especially like Chung Pong, Olivers, those kind of things. She doesn't do a decent to good job at it, but she's not really PvE or anything like that. So I'm going to give her just a 75. In most cases, she's built triple revenge. 100 rest, something like that. Uh, same one for this. I think it's called Angela or something. It's pretty niche and good with other units that also have shields, but then you're looking at like using a lot of the ponies, could be... Elena could be Diana, could be Alexandra, those kind of units. Without that other shield, she's not really too great. And also countering niche things. And I would say just maybe Siege Offense and RTA as well, so probably also build there. I would say probably build, you could build her on Fio Revenge, 100 rest tanky, I guess. Zibala used to be pretty common, but we have a bunch of counters to that right now with the Athena being so strong, the Sonya being so strong. You don't see it anywhere else that much than just RTA. There are a few siege hits that people tend to use it with, but those I don't really like too much myself as well. So I would just go for Sibala probably on 75. And that's mainly because she's doing... Well, she has that S3 that increases cool time as well. Could that be used? Yeah, you can use that in TOA. Like for TOA, it's actually not that bad. So I'm going to place on 80. It's not a really bad unit, but you can see it that it's having some struggles in current meta. But definitely good unit out there. Most cases just built on uh, Swift and as fast as possible. Uh, we have Zima. Zima is a good unit if her skill 3 wouldn't do damage. Because now her skill 3 has a lot of issues landing on water. And there's still a lot of water units out there. And that just makes her a lot worse. So therefore be she becomes like quite of a worse stripper. And I don't really like the unit in general. I've seen some people work with it. If you really build a team around this, then it might work. But I think she's not that great. So she gets a 65 for me. If you want to build her, in most cases, it's going to be either Swift or Vio. Or yeah, you could even Despair, I guess. Yeah, Despair would probably be best for her. Would it be? No, the S2 doesn't do damage. So then the S2 well, already stunned. No, I don't know. Like, she just feels weird. Like, maybe just Vio. Vio is the way to go. But then after that, um, yeah, just fast and accuracy. That's what you want to go over. Uh, Smicer. Smicer, I don't really like the unit too much. Uh, in the European Cup last year, it was used quite some. And then people started picking him up. And then people started knowing of how easy it actually is to counter him. And then, yeah, it didn't really shine too much afterwards, I would say. So, And it's just RTA as well. And same thing for Zima. Zima's just RTA. It's not really used anywhere else. Wouldn't really use that in Siege offense. Too risky to miss a strip. Um, this thing, I would kind of give the same level. It's probably like Vio, Resistance, and then High Accuracy or something. Uh, the Water Ivor. Haven't really seen too much of this unit after the initial release. Initial release, we saw it a few times, but after that, not really. Seen it on some Arena Defense, or Siege Defense, not Arena Defense. Seen it a little bit on RTA, but didn't really shine too well that it was sticking in there. And I'd never seen anyone use it in Offense things, so I'm going to put the Water Ivor at 60. Most common builds probably just revolving around damage fire cassandra however is definitely a unit that used for uh, a lot of pvp stuff arena offense uh, i use it in interserve offense against things like um the seraphs with nefties and that kind of stuff to just snipe out the seraph or the nefties it's definitely used in rta in siege offense it's also used here and there definitely a very strong unit out there i would say but it's just pvp related and it's not doing the it's good in PvP, but it's also not crazy, crazy good in PvP. Because it's very often that you kill a unit and then they kill you as well before you get your turn up again. So I would give that an 80. Because PvE related, it doesn't do anything. Most common build is double Nemesis Will and then 100% crit rate, high attack, high damage and everything like that. We have the Wind Cassandra, which I don't see too much. It kind of has the same skills as the Fire Cassandra on the S2, so it has a new potential. It also has a pushback potential, but you have better units for the pushback, such as like Chung Pong. And if she was like a different element, if she was Water, for example, I think she would have been a lot better. But since she is Wind, it becomes a little bit less interesting because there's already Wind pushbacks. We have a bunch of them. We have Ganymede, we have Savannah, we have a Cigar, we have Chung Pong, we have all of us. So all Wind units are already pushback. And on water, we have a few, like Teor for Rat, but 
It's a little bit less. Maybe even on fire she would have been better. Yeah, fire wish would be pretty decent too. But yeah, for that reason, I think I just put her on 70. She does have some potential with the snipe here and there. If you put it next to like a Sibala or a Yang Hong or anything that instantly boosts her up. She has a snipe potential and then some more bruiser fight-ish. I'm actually going to one down her because I never see her. But I think she has some potential. Probably also just the damage set. Uh, we have the Water Ezio, which is definitely a unit you see sometimes on Siege Defense. You can see on uh, Siege Offense, or no, Arena Offense. I think it's the best Arena Offense Bomber setup. Then you pair it with like a Sierra Bomber and then a Ganymede and then uh, the Bomber itself. So wait, it's Sierra, this thing, Ganymede and then Bomber. That's probably the best Bomber Offense out there right now. You could also do that with double bombers, but then one of the two bombers is going to miss the uh, the attack buff. What you can also do, oh, that, that's the one I was actually using. You use a Kabila in front of it. So you have Kabila, this thing moving, and then you have, still have like attack buff on the right unit and uh, everything like that. So th that one's pretty nice on that as well. So there, there's a few options on that. Wait, was that the office? I don't even remember. I made a bomber video. Look at that. It's pretty decent for that. Siege defense, not too bad. Uh, RTA, it's more or less like the main setup for Maximilian Cleave, but besides that, not really used as much. So I would give him probably a 75. In most cases, just build on Swift as fast as possible. You might want to wheel it. Then we have this thing, which is called also Patrick, which is now the main meta unit in PC10. Or a PC Abyss. I would say that for SF Abyss, he might be usable as well. I haven't never seen him in anything else than just those things. So I would say I just place him at 65. It's a unit that's not really used too much. But I think he might have more use cases than we can think of right now. So he might be a little bit better than that. Um, I'm actually going to one-up him. I, I think like even if you put this unit toward like Dragon's early game and that kind of stuff, I think he might actually be pretty decent in that for killing like the bosses that way. Moving on next to Asher, or at least the Fire Bayek, which is also known as Asher. I would say that he's pretty decent on Siege defense for a little bit, but the big issue is that he will always start hitting Windies, and that just makes him bad. Uh, anything else? Are you really using him that much? Not really, so I'm going to put him to 65 because you don't really see him too much. A common build for Patrick is just uh, pure damage, it seems. This thing is, I would say, a bio high HP kind of style of damage with additional damage artifacts. Then we have this thing, which actually does dots and then healing on dots, but was kind of meant to be PvE related and that kind of stuff. And then they released Abyss, which you cannot dot the boss in anything. And then this thing becomes absolutely useless. <laughs> so yeah, that's not really going to work. So yeah, for that reason, I'm just going to place him in there. And I do notice that I removed one of the wrong uh, Indra. So I have to place in a light Indra, and that is to be the fire Indra. So first of all, the water Indra. You see him sometimes in RTA and sometimes on arena defense, but I think he does really bad. He doesn't really do anything too much on that at all. So yeah, he's just stalling. That, that's all he does. He's just stalling and then dying and then having long animations. And then that, that's just that. So this thing, I'm going to put it there. Uh, the wind one. I never seen it. I don't even know exactly what it does, but I never seen it on offense. I never seen it on defense. I never seen anyone use it. So I can't imagine this unit being any good. Same thing for the fire one. In all honesty, barely ever seen the unit. Uh, keep in mind, this is the fire. <laughs> Just for the reference, it's fire. But yeah, I never seen anyone use it. Never used anywhere. Not worth skilling up. Uh, definitely still needs a buff to be used anything. Uh, then we have the uh, Devil Maidens. First of the water one water one is also very lackluster it's the one where you have like the kind of scroll trap thingy ish but i would say a joe gun scroll trap is already better whereas this one has it on the third skill so it's even worse so that one goes straight to 50 as well we kind of see like a, a trend in here all of the old units are at the top and all of the new units are at the bottom that, that's what we see so far blood yeah uh, I also never seen this unit anywhere. I never seen anyone. Yeah, I've seen one or two people using like Siege Offense and like a very niche thing. RTA is not usable. Would you use this thing in like PvE? PvE you might be able to use in like TOA kind of stuff, but that's already on the point where I'm like, yeah, it's kind of lackluster, but it's a little bit better than the others. Same thing for this one. It's also one of those 
it's maybe a little bit used in RTI. I'm giving it some RTI credit for that. So yeah, these are all not that great. Then we have this thing. This thing is actually pretty good. Siege offense could be used. I mean, offense probably not RTA. Definitely a good RTA unit. Um, I would say for that reason, I'm going to place you in here. Yes, that's fair. I guess that's fair. Yeah. Uh, siege offense. Would you use more siege offense? You kind of end up very bruiser heavy on siege offense. So he's not super great in siege offense. And RTA is not really that well uh, discovered yet. So he might lower down a bit when people know how to play against him as well. But yeah, I would say that he's fair on 80. Probably also just a bio build kind of stuff. For these units, to be honest, I see them this little. I don't even know to build on them. I didn't build those units. I don't recommend anyone to build those units until they're buffed. Uh, this thing is the one that destroys on dots. It is not too bad for some siege offenses, but it's just siege offense and it's very niche. So I wouldn't really recommend to build this thing as well. It doesn't really feel that strong. Uh, this thing, uh, that's probably also just a bio build, tanky shit. This thing I've seen also siege defenses. I've seen uh, mainly the um, number one guild in global trying this a little bit out. Is it really that great or did they just kind of make it shine because of uh, good runes? I'm not entirely sure, but I think it has some potential on siege defense, but that's probably just it. Arena defense, most likely not. So yeah, I'm going to place it here. Probably also just a five tank build. I'm not too familiar with those units. So this is the one that has the... Um, well, let me place this one like even further down here. This is the worst unit in the game. <laughs> this one is so bad. This one is so bad. But yeah, these two units, I haven't really seen too much use cases of them. I've seen this one with the speed lead used here and there in RTA. But it didn't really shine that much in RTA at all. Um, you can use them in Siege Offense, but that's about that. Siege Defense wouldn't place them. So I give this one uh, that. And this one is kind of the same thing as well. It doesn't have the Speed Lead, but it, it does have decent builds. I would say both of them on Via Will and then High Accuracy because they have some strips and that, that kind of style. This is the Stripper, so you definitely want to have it Via and then move in front of your team. But I feel like their skills are kind of lackluster. While editing the video, you might have noticed that I miss a unit in here. And those are the Battle Angels, which are currently very good. I have three units of three elements over here. I'm going to place those as is Battle Angels. In the final result that I will post later, I'll actually like replace them by Battle Angels. But since I can't edit things in here that easily, I'm just going to place those as the Battle Angels. So first off, this is Amber. Amber is a very strong unit early game. Definitely has some decent value for Siege Offense. Arena Offense, incredibly strong. RTA, decent, but not that great. It kind of has like the niche fits with some teams, but it's not super great. PvE-wise, TOA, also a very, very great unit, so I'm definitely going to place Amp pretty high. Would you say you need to have like another strong daughter unit like a Rika to make Amber shine? A little bit, but you could also work around with like a Train or a Sat or something like that if you have that Amber. It definitely can work uh, wonders on that as well. So Amber gets a 95 for me because it's used in that many things. It's just not good on defense, but everything else, it's really good. For the Amber build, it's pretty much just you want to be fast. Despair is good, Bio is good, but you don't really need too much damage. You could go high damage, but high accuracy is more important. And just get the damage from additional damage artifacts. You could go crit rate slot 4, but she doesn't have any scaling on speed anymore, so it's less interesting right now. Then we have Claire. Claire's just a damage dealer. It's sometimes paired with her sister Sonia. Um, I think it's kind of okay as a Siege Cleave, but I think it's just a Siege Cleave and she's not super great at it. I think she's just okay at it, but for me she gets like a... I would give just a Siege Offense unit a 65. I don't think she... Then the final one is Sonia, and Sonia is actually meta right now for Siege Offense, Arena Offense, uh, RTA is even meta in some PvE dungeons right now because we're placing it in PC. I would definitely say Sonya at 95 because the only reason that Sonya is not any higher than this is probably because it's not used on the, the 100 tier. And the only reason she's not a 100 tier is because she doesn't have that much value in PvE. You're not going to put her towards TOA, you're not going to put her towards uh, Giants or that kind of things. Whereas Amber you can also use in TOA and a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, Sonia also needs pretty decent runes to shine, however. Sonia is pretty much if you place in the right team in Siege, guaranteed win. If you place in the right team in Arena Offense, guaranteed win. If you place it in the right team in RT8, it's mostly a must ban or a guaranteed win. So she's really good. However, because she doesn't have any PvE value that much, I can't really place her here. And she's 
pretty unique in what she does, but she's not like Leo level unique of what she does. So for that reason, I keep her a little bit lower than that. And she's not used on defense. So 95 for that reason. Sonia built, however, you mostly want to just go for swift and then as fast as possible, high crit rate, high attack. High attack is very important. So yeah, it's mainly a trade-off like how high attack do you go, how much speed do you give, and offset is most likely will, but otherwise broken is also. So yeah, that's pretty much the whole tier list. Uh, we did it in an hour and 37, which is faster than last time. Do I feel like I want to up a few units? Yeah, the only thing I've been eyeballing for a while is upping Vanessa. And I think Vanessa is one up because it's one of the core units in RTA, but it's also one of the main core units in arena defense. I would say probably the best leader skill arena defense out there right now you could argue about health as maybe being better but that depends on what kind of team you're using or clara but i i think that's in current meta vanessa is definitely very high up in that and but it's once again just a pvp unit but it's very good for that and it's also one of the core main picks in uh rta as well so definitely give that one some credit for that and then this is the whole tier list for any of those units. So once again, thanks a lot for watching and hope you enjoyed this video. I'm not going to make it any longer than this. There is going to be a tier list for all of the LD5s as well. And definitely if you let me know in the comments, if you watch the whole video from ADC, write that in the comments. I can really appreciate that your guys are just watching this whole thing. And definitely if you want to save this video for later that you can just check at it for saying like, okay, I, uh, I picked up a new unit. Is it any good? Keep in mind that this tier list is based on the meta that we have right now and the balance patch that we have right now. So it might change a little bit if units get addressed in the balance patch. Guys, thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you as always in the next one.